straight up four and a half hours. Just getting ready for the Akatanango hike. Gonna have one last meal around eight and then uh, pack up the camp and head up the volcano around 10 or 11 p.m. and do the hike overnight. Hopefully get there around four or five in the morning. Uh, I don't know if you can see that, but probably not. Another Land Cruiser pulled over. They're gonna be doing the hike in a few days, but uh, yeah, just gotta eat a bit, pack the bags, and then um, and we'll be heading up. So Volcano Catanango is just under 4,000 meters tall. And because of the elevation, it's usually freezing at the top or even just below. And with us being used to the hot temperatures of Guatemala, we packed our bags with as many layers as we could and even a sleeping bag and blanket for the top. This still almost wasn't enough. So yeah, we're just starting and it's 10.45. Gonna go nice and slow. So we chose to do the hike overnight because we didn't have the gear for the below freezing temperatures and trying to find rentals for sleeping bags without a tour guide seemed more difficult than just doing the hike overnight. Our thought process was just to go nice and slow and take it as easy as we could. We heard from a lot of people that they got altitude sickness and got sick during the hike, and for us that just didn't sound fun. <sighs> oh, half an hour in, already wearing a t-shirt. And two, Sweating. 200 meters high. Straight up, just stairs, stairs, stairs. <sighs> Forty five minutes in. Thank you. It's just over an hour in. We're almost at 3,000 meters. 2980, so half a vertical kilometer gained so far. So, pretty good. Definitely feel it though. Hour and a half. 31.50 elevation rise. I think we're making good time. Yeah, I literally think we're like a third of the way, if not more, maybe. What do you mean 31.50? For elevation. Oh. And we have to go to? Just under 4,000. I actually think we're gonna be too early. Oh no. I think we're gonna we're gonna have too much time up top. Hopefully 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 the sleeping bag and stuff is warm enough. Yeah. Just over thirty two hundred meters. An hour and forty five in. How do you feel? Not too bad. <laughs> Yeah, I don't feel better, too bad either. Worse. It's actually not so bad. It's kind of flattening out the last half hour, but apparently it gets yeah, pretty... Green. Yeah. Huh. Apparently the top gets pretty steep. We'll see. <sighs> nice and cool, though. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of glad we're doing this in the night. Yeah. I can't believe the, if the sun would be shining. We're like two hours in on the dot, 3,300 meters, so over halfway elevation gain. And there's car tires here. <laughs> so I guess this is the road they use to get supplies up near the base camp. It'd be nice to drive up here. <laughs> It'd be nice. But where do they come from? I think there's a road that connects, I don't know. See on the map, there's a few different routes. The other guy said that you have to go from the farm or whatever. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> I 
engine brake. Two hours in, two and a half rather. We're like 3,500 meters. Time for the first snack. Got the Guatemalans in a Hilux. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Living life. Having a time. We're at this fork. Where you can start going down on this like big road. Or go up. It's hard to tell if this is the red route, but it goes directly pretty much to the summit where this one kind of goes around the mountain. And then you do a scramble up to the summit if you're staying overnight. But I think we're gonna go right. And it gets a bit steep again, but it'll pretty much make the climb to the top more gradual. Just shy of three hours. Three, five, 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 oh, six elevation. <coughs> it's really loose here using these walking sticks we found. I've never actually used walking sticks. Me neither. But they're really, <laughs> they really help. I think, yeah, I think you'd need them for this. Yeah. Especially when we're gonna be going down. Neither of us are wearing boots, and these shoes don't really have any grip, so. Yeah, slippery. Slippery walk. I'm still wearing a t-shirt, though. I, I think I'm gonna have to put crazy. something on. Yeah. I got my... Russian hot. It's actually free as long as you um, join the military. That's all it takes to get one of these for free. <laughs> Whew, we're about three and three quarter hours in. It's 2.30. And uh, we're at 30, 3750 almost elevation wise. So 200 meters left to go. I think, I think our biggest problem is we're just going to be too early up there and apparently it's cold but the forecast says there's uh, there's almost no wind tonight so fingers crossed we brought a blanket and a sleeping bag just in case and a bunch of extra clothes. How do you feel? I'm tired. Yeah. Yeah, it's so far. This route we took, the last hour has just been pretty steep. You can kind of see on the map, it's, it's steep. But if you go to the base camp, you're kind of walking along this ridge. And you're not gaining any elevation. And then there's a really steep scramble at the end. So this way we're kind of, kind of uh, averaging it all out. There's a few steep sections coming up. Nothing crazy. Yeah, be curious to see when we'll get there. <laughs> Almost four and a half hours in. And 30, 38.60 for elevation. Close. Just gotta move up the screen trail. And then that's the peak, that circle there, the lookout. <coughs> oh, that should give us the view on Fuego. You can see any it's on camera. But there's the city down there. Lightning over there. Milky Way is above us. 
That's crazy. Just about 3,900, I think. <laughs> Should be. Just about 50 to 100 meters left until summit. Ooh, I wonder if you could see that lightning. Almost exactly five hours from uh, base to summit. Oh yeah. That's <laughs> wow. Wow. It's way too early. We're the only ones here. Wow. Wow. There's no one. There's no one. And it's cold. It's so cold. <laughs> Wow. You have to wait. Wow. Wow. Yo. We did it, man. Yes. <laughs> that last hour. That was brutal. That was brutal. Let's uh, let's get the air mattress out and set up next to this rock. Try to get some shelter from the wind. Holy, shit, it's so loose here. <coughs> We're here way early. It's not even 4 a.m. It's quarter to four. Yeah. When does the sun go up? 5:40. 5:40. Uh, yeah. In two hours. <laughs> Oops. But yeah, we got the sleeping bag and uh, the volcano's there. Oh, you can't see it erupting yet, but it's going to get warm, hopefully. If you ever get the opportunity to do this hike, the nighttime eruptions are definitely worth seeing. I wasn't really able to get any good videos of them. And then despite the fact that we were actually both shivering, freezing cold, and sitting against some sharp rocks, we both ended up falling asleep. And then just as it started getting a little lighter, the tour group started coming up to the peak and woke us up, and I was able to get one spectacular video of the volcano in the dark. So the tour groups actually end up leaving pretty quick after the sunrise. So being the first ones up, we were almost last ones down. And after we got all of our photos and had time to take in the views, we started the hike back down, this time in the daylight. This loose volcanic rock takes a lot of energy to walk down, and we both ended up falling a few times. Unfortunately, it's like this most of the way down, so wear good boots if you're going to do this hike, and definitely bring some walking sticks.
Soon you end up back in the pine forests, and one of the nice things about doing this hike overnight is that even though now you have to do a grueling hike down, you get to see all the epic views you missed going up in the dark. Back at the truck parking. I'm gonna take an alternate route down. Right, Niggy? <laughs> Uh, I think the road, it's so, uh, it's so hard packed and steep that it's going to be really slippery, so fingers crossed this is a, a uh, more manageable route. 7.30 a.m. <clears throat> 3,400 meters. Working our way down. Coming up on 3,000 looks more like jungle now. Back to Guatemala. Ooh, just broke 3,000. Cool diagram how the uh, how the forest changes. Oak forest, cloud forest, up to pine and subalpine. Before the 60s in Yellowstone, like they were suppressing lions in addition. Just like that, we're back at the farmhouse that you gotta go through. Pretty much there. It's maybe another 100 meters, 150. <laughs> My legs barely work. <laughs> Finally, finally. Something like 5,100 feet gained. Something like 5,100 feet descended. So it's uh, nice to finally be back at the camp. Yeah, so that's the Akatenango hike. And to summarize, uh, neither of us really thought it's a hike you need a guide for. It's definitely pretty physically demanding, but it's not very technical. Um, the big things are I would recommend you have good footwear, uh, good footwear in the sense that it's comfortable and has good grip. We both wore kind of flat bottom shoes and we paid for it on the way down and on the way up. Uh, the other thing is if you're going to do the hike overnight, at the very top when you get above the alpine land there's no more trees. It can be a little difficult to see where you're going, so something with GPS I would definitely recommend. Otherwise the trails, you know, 100 people a day use them and they're pretty well marked out. And then the final thing really is just hiking sticks. Um, you really want hiking sticks, I, I can't say that otherwise. It's steep up and it's steep down, so it's hard on the knees. And also with it being slippery, it's nice to just have an extra two points of traction. Uh, the only other thing I could say is that the only other thing I can say is that if um, you are going to do the hike overnight, try to estimate how long it's going to take you to get up there. You kind of want to get up there while it's still dark so you can see the volcano erupting at night and all the beautiful yellow, orange, and red colors. But you also don't want to do what we did and end up freezing up there for two hours. So yeah, with that said, if you're going to do the hike, good luck. And um, if you're not, I still hope you enjoyed the video. And like and subscribe.